Hey, this is Coach Mike Riley, and I am here today with Ben Pearson from Minnesota MMA News and UFC referee Nick Gams. And today we're going to be taking on a topic that I think is absolutely huge in the state of Minnesota, and that is the state of refereeing. Ben, you go to almost every show, you, get, you have reporters at every show. What are you seeing with the state of referees right now in Minnesota? I think the biggest thing that, that I see on an event-to-event -event basis is there are some refs in this state who are just too timid at what they're doing. We can train them and we can show them the rules and show them where they need to stand, but if you're not confident in yourself, you're not going to command that cage and, and there are some refs in the state. We're not going to name names today, that's not, that's not what we're here to do. I just want to see refereeing be better. I don't want to see anybody get hurt. I mean, that is the biggest danger. I, an early stoppage, it is what it is, it happens. Missing something like that, you know, the thing is the late stoppages are what's dangerous and just not knowing when a fight needs to be stopped or not being confident enough in yourself to jump in there and stop a fight. That's what I'm seeing and that's what's scaring me. Well, I mean, it, it seems like one of the problems, I mean, we are actually seeing fighters getting physically hurt because the referees are not competent in their jobs. And that's frightening. I mean, you know how far we'd be set back if there was a serious injury in the cage right now or even a death. I mean, we'd be in trouble if, if something like that happened. We, a lot of people have done a lot of work in this state to get where we're at today, and that would set us back a lot. And like, you know, I've said this on, on the forum on my website, you know, I have to deal with the common person at the newspaper a lot. You know, when I write an MMA story for the newspaper, I always get emails from people who don't know anything about the sport and complain that we're covering it or whatever. And those are the people, this would just, you know, if somebody got seriously hurt, that would just give them ammunition when they write that email and, and try and get our sport banned or, and get our sport out of all these local venues. So, now, Nick, you've, you've refereed in the UFC. Uh, you're pretty universally recognized in the state of Minnesota as being one of the best referees that we have in the state. Uh, That's you, you and You and Daryl Guthmiller's name always comes up as, as two referees that when people want to fight, they, they're the guys, you're the guys they want in there. So kind of as, you know, as an expert referee, what are you seeing with the current crop of new referees? Well, first of all, I think Daryl and I emerged out of a large group of referees. So at the time before the commission came into place, um, there were probably 30 or 40 referees refing some of the shows in and around Iowa, Wisconsin, North Dakota, South Dakota, and Minnesota. And so out of, out of all those referees, those 30 or 40, we had two emerge who were quite good or, you know, and when you have, it's a numbers game. When the state only um, uh, trains in eight or nine referees, the, the, the odds of getting two great referees out of that or two really good referees out of that are, are, are small. So what really needs to happen is the community needs to come together with the commission we have to train a lot more referees, and those guys have to go out and really put their time in, and they have to be criticized each and every time they walk in and step out of that cage. Um, I think some of the issues that we've had with some of the guys getting hurt are, once again, referees not uh, going into each particular fight thinking exactly this is the task at hand. I have to watch out for rule infractions. I have to be in there to protect the fighters. I have to be in position to protect those fighters. A lot of times you see a, a guy who's a very uh, uh, young, good, up-and-coming referee go in and not make the necessary adjustments each fight. Sometimes he's in position and sometimes he's out of position. Every time, every fight, you need to do the same things and you need to do them um, right every time uh, way back in the day I, I rep you know I was a referee I refereed a couple hundred bouts and I will say I was not good <laughs> at it I, I, I made a lot of mistakes but I always erred on the side of caution uh, I stopped fights too soon and and I was frequently criticized for it and I guess my argument was well I'd rather have you get up and complaining to me than having you cart it off but I know that I stopped fights too soon and I wasn't great at the job but one of the things I tried to do was to stay in between the fighters, where I could see both the fighters' eyes. And what I'm seeing in a lot of these referees is that they're behind one of the fighters. They're behind the action. Are, are, you, are you seeing these kind of positional mistakes? Absolutely, I mean, and it happens night in and night out. And, and once again, I go back to the issue that these guys need to tell themselves before they step into the cage, before every fight, where's my positioning gonna be? What am I looking for? I need to see 
both guys face. That's, that's ideally where I need to be. It's not always gonna be perfect, but I need to always be working my position to, so that I can see their faces. And then from top to bottom, going through my checklist of what I'm looking for in different positions. I'm not gonna be looking too much for illegal knees and illegal elbows on the ground as I am going to be for the stand-up. So you have to understand where the fouls are coming from. And, and once again, this comes with, with just training and over and over the, the repetition. Now you go back to the, the point that you made about stopping fights too early. Yes, once again, as a promoter um, and as a fan of the sport, I would much rather a fight be stopped early and have these guys have the opportunity to fight again versus having the fight stop too late and, and really having a guy end his career over something uh, like that. I mean, believe me, if you get seriously injured in this sport and it's the fault of somebody else, you are gun shy walking in again, I guarantee it. Well, I think we're seeing right here exactly what we're talking, what I'm talking about with the timidness. We can teach these guys the positions and those things, but we need to identify the personalities too. I mean, yep. what makes Nick a good ref is that, you know, he's flamboyant, he's, he's, he's got a huge personality, he's got a, he's loud, he's, you know, all those things, and you can take those the wrong way if you want, but, <laughs> you know, guess. you know what I mean? He, he's a personal guy, he's, he's, he's into it, he's loud, he's going to command that cage when he's in there, and I don't see a lot of guys that do that right now, and that, I don't know that you can teach that. I mean, do you really feel like, we're not gonna change these guys' personalities. Right. We can t give them the tools to succeed, but if they're not confident in their ability, it, it's just not gonna happen. You know, like you said, I, I think the only way we can correct that is to be constantly evaluating you know, e every guy every time they're in there. True, I, I had the luxury of growing up in, in an athletic community where we, we always had to give back. As, as a baseball player, I always had to um, umpire the younger kids' games. As a football player, we always had to uh, ref the younger kids' games. And so when I got the opportunity uh, about eight years ago to ref an MMA fight, I took it. And uh, yes, I made plenty of mistakes. I've, I've been yelled at by everybody. Um, I've been punched, kicked, uh, spit on. Um, you know, I've had mouth guards thrown at me, all kinds of these things. And these are the types of things that cannot affect you um, as a referee. You just have to understand that criticism is going to take place. One out of two guys, or 50% of, of the, the people that you meet that night are gonna maybe disagree with your decision, and you have to accept that. And um, you're right, confidence cannot always be taught, but it can be instilled little by little. And I think a lot of these guys do have confidence, we just don't see it yet, you know, and uh, hopefully uh, they'll start moving more and more towards that confidence, but we have to give that to them too. We have to tell them when you're doing something right, we can't always just be breaking them down. And we, we say all that, and it's the worst job in the world. Yeah, I've never, you know what I mean? It's, it's a thankless job. You're not going to hear from people generally when you do a good job. I, I've, I've said, if you did a great job as a referee, nobody will notice it. I mean, I, and I, I hate referees. When I ref myself, I was filled with self-loathing. When Nick talks about having been yelled at, screamed at, thrown punches, uh, and, and spit on bit, uh, those were all me. That just that, happens to you on the way that. to work, you know, I mean, doesn't I, and <laughs> I don't want to mention names. You know, I, 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 I live by the motto, you got a rope, you got a tree, all you need is a referee. But, you know, because I, I, I do hate the refs, but I understand they are necessary evil. That we got to have refs, and they've got to be good, because a, a bad referee is going to, it, bad judges, you know, bad judges are out there. We expect judges to be bad. I, I personally believe, have the belief, it's like, if you can't do, you coach. If you can't coach, you promote. If you can't promote, you be a fan. If you can't be a fan, you become a referee. If you're too stupid to be a referee, I mean, you're just that brain dead, then become a judge, you start, right? You start I mean, a website? You know, it's like, I, I just thinking like, you know, I mean, it doesn't matter. If you let a fight go to the judges, you deserve it. You deserve it. It's like, you know I mean? It's like, hey, you found yourself in a jury trial, you know? Who knows how it's gonna end? OJ walks, other people go, you know, get locked up. So I don't care about the, I don't care about how bad the judges are. People wanna complain about the judges. I don't care how bad the judges are. But a bad referee is going to get somebody killed. An incompetent referee, an incompetent referee is going to get people hurt. That's what I can't stand. And, and I think we've, you know, I think we're at a point right now where it's critical, where every show you go to, you're seeing these just god awful performances by the referee that I think we need to, we need to address. And I, I think Nick's right, we need a lot more people in the pool. I think you're right that we need to find the right personalities. I also think we need some continuing education for these guys. I, Mark Nelson, who's 
you know, widely renowned as being one of the greatest boxing referees, active boxing referees around. Um, you know, I was talking to him about how, how boxing referees go, go through this. And these guys go and referee sparring in gyms. They go to gyms and, they, and they, they referee some of this stuff. You know what, there's a lot of wrestling bouts out there, there's a lot of jujitsu bouts out there, there's a lot of MMA sparring, and these guys that are serious about being MMA referees, who are really dedicated to it, if you are really serious about it, you need to start seeking out your opportunities to spend more time on the mat, more time in the cage, whatever the environment is, and really start to learn your craft because like I said, I, I probably did 300 bouts as a ref, and I was still terrible, and I still felt lost. And I'm willing to bet you probably felt that way until you did about your thousand match. Correct. You know, the hardest thing about, um, about refereeing is, is, is being consistent. And I, don't, I, I disagree with you in that the referees' performances have been terrible, because I think a lot of guys have done a good job with what they were given um, in training and, and criticism. I mean, once again, uh, Daryl or I are not always able to give them the criticism they need, so they're getting criticism from a lot of people who may not know, um, you know, uh, and, and they're taking that criticism. But I think more importantly, um, the the state of referees has to uh, change from within this community. We have to push guys to become referees, you know, as well as. Um, you know, just have guys sign up. This is a thankless job. It is also a job that if you are doing this for money, you are in the wrong business because number one, you can't get paid enough that, what, that measures how you, important you are. You are the first line of defense in an MMA fight. You are the person that is going to determine whether or not somebody gets injured or not. And you can't get paid enough for that. In fact, I've been paid once, I know all the times I've refereed. I referee because it's my way of giving back to the MMA community that I also take from. And just like you know, fighters give up their bodies and coaches give up uh, endless amounts of time um, and newspapers uh, write with you know, only criticism and, and barely enough uh, uh, kibble to survive, um, the same with referees. Uh, we are, you know, we do this, it's a thankless job, but we do it because we love it, and that's why you have to do it. And if you're not doing it because of that, then you're doing it for the wrong reasons. Any closing thoughts, Ben? No, I think we touched on a lot of good, I mean, the, these are little things that, that could be done to go a long way as far as preventing what you're talking about. I mean, we can't, we cannot suffer a serious injury or death in the cage right now, not, you know, not the way things, you know, this would be a real easy cut for the government, you know right. what I mean? This would be a real easy thing to stop and, and this would just provide exactly what they're looking for is someone to get up on their soapbox and, and have something to scream about. We haven't given them much to scream about for a while, so it, you know, it's, it's dangerous and obviously there's an inherent danger when you step in that cage, but a ref can certainly minimize that danger. I, you know, I agree. I, I think that you know, every time we hold a show, every time a bell rings, there's the potential for tragedy. Yeah, good ref, bad ref, you know, there, there's the potential there. But we need to, in good conscience, be able to look at the public and to be able to look, you know, and I always think it's like, at some point, you know, this could happen and I've, I'm gonna have to look at somebody's family and, and, and say, we did everything we could in good conscience to, to, you know, for that fighter's safety, for that fighter's preparedness. And right now, I don't feel as that those who are licensing our officials can say that. I, I don't feel that they're doing everything they could do. Um, but then again, I, I feel the community does need to rise to the challenge and provide those opportunities. So I, I really thank both of you for being able to share, uh, share your views, share your concerns. And you know, this is, I really want this to be a jumping off point. This is a, this is a launch point that you know, we can start providing more training. Uh, I know that my sparring sessions, our sparring sessions are open to people. Um, to improve their refereeing and we are looking for referees and we're looking for people who are passionate about the sport who have confidence in themselves and a commitment to improve. I'm not expecting you to be to be Big John McCarthy the first the first time you hear a bell ring but I am expecting you to have that level of excellence in your mind every time because if you're going to be responsible for my fighter's safety I want to know that you're serious about it. I couldn't have said it better. I think you touched on all three points if a guy can walk in and, and have those things, 
um, he is on the fast track to becoming a good referee and an important piece um, to continuing MMA in the state of Minnesota.